In this series, five comedians from different cultural backgrounds and all at various stages of their stand-up careers will come together to explore the idea of comedy and culture. Well, there's, there's a bit of a kick out of it, I suppose. Like, I wouldn't do it if I didn't think it was hilarious. We'll follow them through a series of workshops that will cover everything from stage presence to shock tactics and timing to self-confidence. One, two, three. Gee! Everyone say bollocks. One, two, three. Bollocks! At the end of their journey, they'll perform their routines at a live show in DCTV's Comedy on the Corner Club. What's a traveller's favourite bar? A club bar? <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you'll join them on their journey of exploration into what makes us laugh across cultures. <laughs>
comedy career so far has is, is literally five minutes old. It started with, uh, first of all, um, David McSavage uh, came on my program, I'd say about uh, four or five months ago. Actually, he asked me to come on his uh, Savage Eye uh, program that dealt with racism. Uh, and I was the expert uh, talking about racism in Ireland and whatnot. And, and I had a great laugh with him. And I said it to him, God, I'd, I'd love to be able to stand up in front of a, a room full of people and make them laugh like you do. And he said, well, why don't you? you know, and I thought, yeah, why don't I? So, so far I've performed in the International, uh, The Bankers, and my biggest gig was at the Laughter Lounge where I performed in front of about 400 people. Yo, do us a favour, sum up Dale in three words. Uh, gay, migrant, Irish. Okay, um, all right. Basically, we just want to show you the difference um, food in um, Africa and in um, Ireland. So he's, he's very good. He eats, he, he, eat, he like eating African food, you know. Yeah, that's his Irish African guy. And I, I, I like the Irish, I like eating Irish food. It's more like, I just want to be, I want to be cool. So I want to be more Irish. And he's My name is very, very African. David originally, but um, I go by the name Fabi D. I'm from uh, Nigeria. Nigeria is where I'm from. And um, as you can see, I'm living in Finglas now. For those that don't know where Fingers is, it's like a ghetto. It's like a gangster ghetto in Dublin, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a fish. This fish. Oh, Jesus. Fish. This is like a, it's a dry fish. Can I try? You can eat raw. Or oh, the bone. Oh. No, it's, it's okay. I used to sell scratch cards in Henry Street. So the way I sell scratch cards to people was just stopping them and act like, yo, man, what's up? I do, man, you want to buy a scratch card? Oh, my, these kids, you know, I just, I, you know, trying to talk to them and they find me funny and they laugh. So when I stopped the guy and I was trying to sell scratch card, I was making him laugh and he goes, wow, you're a funny guy. I go, yeah. And he goes, he gave me his card. I was like, okay. He said, I should come to, he said, he runs a comedy club in a um, town called the Haypenny Bridge, okay? And his name was Tony. And he said, all right, cool. I said, well, I'll check it out. Why did, why did you turn the on? Is it because it was too black? <laughs> <laughs> I started cracking jokes and talking about me being black and I, I had to like express myself. I said, look, um, I told them, look, um, I'm so black when I go to night classes, they mark me absent. And they laughed. I was like, wow, this is getting good. I liked, I liked the fact I was liking myself and they were laughing. In Ireland, they liked the fact that um, you talk about yourself. You know, they want to know what's, what's about you that we don't know. And they want to know how funny it is. So that's how my comedy just began. Where's the cameras on? Oh, yeah. Go west of all Hi, uh, my name is Thomas McDonough. I'm a sort of a beginner comedian. Uh, I'm a travel comedian and um, I do but uh, most of my work down the youth centre. And I'm also in a FOSS course uh, out in Fisborough. I'm studying business, uh, business studies there. One, two. Fly like a butterfly, steal like a traveller. Ah! Yeah, he is gas. Like, he just be out in our house the whole time and it's just, anytime he's there, he can't stop laughing the whole time. And even if it's not funny, it's just because he tries so hard. Just give us Thomas in three words. Ben, stupid, silly, and at, at times energetic. I know that's seven words. Name's Sasha. Uh, I'm an osteopath by day, and I like to do a bit of stand-up comedy and a bit of improv in the evenings. Um, been doing stand-up for a couple of years now after doing a workshop. Uh, loved it. Just loved, loved, uh, loved the idea of making people laugh. It's a bit, you kind of get hooked on the laughter. And I love doing stand-up and improv because I kind of just love the attention as well. Yeah. And the reason I know this is because Jesus means a lot to me. <laughs> I don't know what it is when you get the crowd laughing, there's something in me that just, yes, that's it. The, the applause and the laughter, it was like, you know, I want more. My name's Sasha, thanks for listening, you've been a great audience. I was uh, born in London, uh, my parents were from Mauritius. Uh, so I've got a kind of a, a mix of things and I've been, into, uh, been in Ireland for the past 10 years. And I think I've got a nice uh, or a different view of the different cultures as well and the different mixes. Um, and I'm looking forward to this experience of meeting different people. There's a, there's a very inter interesting and diverse bunch of people here. So uh, I'm looking forward to see what happens. Tabby, Tabitha. Yes, sir. Tabby. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I've never done stand up. I've done a few MC um, gigs, I suppose, because I'm in a, a gospel choir called Discovery Gospel Choir. 
and it's a multicultural gospel choir. We've done a hell of a lot of high profile gigs. And it started off me introducing songs and I found like I got nervous when I was introducing a song so I'd, I'd make a joke and oh, people would be like rolling down the aisles laughing. So then it kind of became a bit more of a, oh, Tabby introduced a song, you know, more regular. And so um, I decided, why not do this? <laughs> Let's maybe chat for a second about um, what we what we want to get out of this, and maybe some fears as well. Yeah. When when you when you think you're being really funny, you put your heart and soul, a lot of preparation in a line, and you're there in front of everyone. There's a few people there, and there's nothing. I can see the tumbleweed going past. That's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is: Are people going to think? Uh, uh, is it going to actually? Uh, discredit me as an activist or as a broadcaster or what you're doing, doing, doing a stand-up. I hope people will get the idea that I'm actually going into stand-up to actually push the, the boundaries even more, you know, that's my biggest fear. By the end of this project, I hope to have a, a better idea of what, what is funny when it comes to issues. So how far can I go before my routine actually, you know, go, goes that step too far and is no longer funny and is actually me on a soapbox. And then the other one is timing. I think any, any comedian with their salt, they, they would tribute their, their, their success to their timing. The only fear that I have, for example, the Irish people, like, are they going to understand my accent, my dialect? Like, just for example, it's like saying, it's like me telling a white man, saying, okay, I eat padded yam. <laughs> she laughed, none of this laughs, you see? Because it's just because they won't understand what I'm trying to say. But padded yam, it's like a mashed potato on steroid. So if you do that explanation on stage, what's the fourth word? Pounded. Pounded, Pounded yam dead, is like yam. Irish potatoes on steroids. Especially yeah. if you do the accent yeah. and you make a noise of a potato. What noise would a potato on steroids make? I don't know. <gasps> Basically, what I want to get out of this um, project is um, I want more experience, you know? Because the more experience, the better the job, you know? What do you do in the nightclub? Show us how you dance in the nightclub. In the nightclub? Yeah. In the nightclub, I go like this. Hey, I don't know what I'm doing. What I'm doing. <laughs> But it's good, but I, I enjoy doing it. It's very lovely. It's, 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 my, it's, it's my dream to have TV and cameras after me and taking pictures, you know? I, like, I won't tell them to stop. I just keep posing them. It's, it's my dream. It's my dream, yeah. My fear would mainly be not knowing if the audience aren't laughing because it, it's not funny or because maybe they don't get it. At, I, at first, I used to try and explain the joke, which is a very bad idea to do. But um, so my point really is, I not, I, not, I really like to find if there was a way in my head that I would know that the stuff isn't funny, or if they just don't get what I'm saying. If you're doing stand up, it's just you, and you're expected to make people laugh, and they won't. I, I suppose they wouldn't laugh to like humour you. It's either you're funny or you're not funny, you know. Yeah, some audiences do laugh just to please you, but not many. You know, if they feel that they, they know you're insecure, they'd probably laugh with you to help you out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not really good for you as a comedian to have people laugh at you with your jokes. Out of pity. Yeah, out There's of pity. There's nothing worse than pity laughing. If your jokes don't stand up, I, as a comedian, would like to know they don't stand up. When I first heard about this project, I thought, this is an interesting idea, and I don't think anybody has ever done it. Yeah, you're a black man smell. <laughs> black woman smell. <laughs> Lesbian smell, <laughs> traveler smell. I thought it was actually a very interesting question. Like, you know, does comedy have borders, I suppose, in this modern Ireland, I suppose? And um, I really wanted to kind of explore that question and meet everybody else that would have been involved in the project because I thought they were kind of like an interesting mix of characters. One, two, three, gee! Everyone say bollocks. One, two, three, bollocks! So over the next few weeks, we're going to say stuff Intentionally, unintentionally, we're going to hear stuff. I'm going to push your buttons, challenge you, get you to do stuff that you mightn't want to do. So everyone say to me now the word that they really hate. Go. Knacker. I can't say it. Say the bleeding <laughs> word. My skin actually wanted to crawl off me at the thought of having to say the word. But you finally got, you got me to say it on camera of all places. So it was, it was a good workshop. It was a good experience, definitely.
Cunt. Very good. Oh, God. Packy. Packy. Everyone say <laughs> Packy. One, two, three. Packy. Packy. Fuck off. Packy. I mean, that workshop was mad. Uh, it's kind of like going on a really good roller coaster ride. You're going into a scary area where for years you have been told you're not supposed to say that. You can say, you put those little veto areas in your brain to say no. You can't say these things. Fellow. Um, that, that word, that word, that one word. That I uh, hate was going to... Whatever. Oh, um, idiot. Idiot. You have to say it properly. Idiot. No, idiot. Is it, no, is it, like, I, like, it, I like the way you guys pronounce the word. It's so cool. Like, he goes, idiot. That's so cute. But no, if, if an African, African goes, idiot. idiot. You are an idiot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. Excuse idiot. me, son. You are an idiot. <laughs> or in the oil, we go, you're fucking idiot, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. I honestly don't know. Maybe fool. Words just kind of sort of bounce off me, sort of. The word for me is prick. Especially if you say it from the, the guttural kind of place. <laughs> from the old prick. idiot place. Yeah, prick. Fucking yeah. prick. Prick. We'll take you from this to this in a second. And some of the reason why we don't have different people from different cultures and nationalities and backgrounds and sexualities and cultural origins doing comedy is because of all of these kind of words and fears and expectations and uh, limitations that society puts on us. And what I want us to do is identify them and try and smash them and go through that wall and stand up on the stage as a proud, black, lesbian, traveling, Whatever on that stage and from the flats, from the flats in Ballymore, the scumbags or the Nakaraguans of as Ballymore, <laughs> Nakaraguans, <laughs> which is offensive to me, travellers and Nicaraguans. <laughs> I didn't do that just you know just to be a pain, but I done that really to sh to show them that uh, it's really up to them what they say, what they don't say, how far they push themselves. There's nobody else outside externally controlling what's going on in their head or what comes out of their mouth. So they're really the masters of their own uh, communication or their, or their, their own projection. Uh, and what other people see is entirely up to them. And I think if they get that at the early stage in comedy and that really the only rules are the rules that you impose on yourself, that will be a great tool for them to have. Chérie, je t'aime moho, chérie, je t'aime moho. C'est la chanson que chantent tous les hommes pour tromper les femmes. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. Our five comedians aren't the only ones who have to write a new routine. I'm going to be emceeing on the night, and after the fourth workshop, I got inspired. So I took a trip down Parnell Street on a joke collecting mission. I was bound to meet a few mad jokes and get a few laughs on the Do way. Do you have any jokes? Jokes. No, just that guy, when, um, his English is not very good, but when he said customer coming half six, yeah. the pronunciation is not very good, he said coming half sex. Half sex? <laughs> see, you, you, you see does Chinese now? humor and Nigerian humor mix? Let's go. Yeah, uh, there's a bird flying from A to B. Yeah. It uh, takes him one hour, but uh, when he flies from B to A, it uh, takes him two hours. Do you okay. know why? 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 Where are, you, where are you from originally? I'm from China originally. From China, yeah. what part? Southeast. No way, where, whereabouts? Uh, it's Qingdao, do you know that? Oh, no, so yeah. It's um, beers, yeah. Whereabouts there? What's the, exactly? It's a street? What's the street? What street? Yeah. God, I have no idea now, because I live here so long. Like, yeah, I haven't got a clue. You've got a real dub accent, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, it's priced with the one way, so wow. two hours. Two, two hours. <laughs> Um, so he flies like this because the sun is in his way. One. Yeah, no, see, it's funny. It's, it's funny, but it's, that's impossible anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It's a joke! Back to the workshop. I've asked everyone to tell a joke on stage, either an old favourite or some of their own material. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Tabitha! Woo! And when I first got here um, in school, they used to be like, oh, so do you speak another language? And I'm like, yeah, of course I speak like Swahili. And they're like, go on, speak a bit of Swahili. So obviously I'd exaggerate and be like, a bit of, tick, a, bit of a tick, facial twitch. And they'd be like, oh, it's mad. And then I'd be like, actually, we don't really speak like that. It's kind of like the Lion King. If you've seen the Lion King, you pretty much know a little bit of Swahili. I tend to like start my phrases with where I come from. And all of a sudden, the, like, the faces just light up. It's like, oh. Here comes a nugget of information. 
I suppose if you can't laugh at yourself, you'd probably cry. <laughs> so that's why I suppose I poke fun at being, you know, from Africa and concern and choker and the kids and malnutrition and the flies and all the beautiful things about Africa. I've told people that I was the face of concern 92. <laughs> but I, I was like, you know, but, but people don't really recognize me without the slant on my forehead, you know? It's like if I put it on, it's like, <laughs> there you are. She'd done the face of concern, which I thought was very funny. And I, can't, I sort of thought of a couple of jokes straight away that she could actually use, and I keep meaning to tell her, but I will do eventually. But I don't know if she came across saying, like, I'm actually famous in my homeland. But if she didn't, I think she should, kind of like, hey, a lot of you may not know me, but uh, I'm actually quite famous in my homeland. I'm, I'm a celebrity in the face of concern, you know, kind of way. She's the point in that sort of sense. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Thomas McDonough! Right, as far as I know, it's Paddy Englishman, Paddy Irishman, Paddy Scotsman. And um, in the bedroom, there was somebody sort of saying, I'm going to no. get you, I'm going to eat you in the closet. Yeah, yeah in the closet. Right. Oh, well, if you know it, then tell me. What was it? Pa Paddy Englishman, Paddy Irishman, and Paddy Scotsman. They, they got, went into this haunted house. And, and like they didn't know I was haunted, but when and he went and then pa, Paddy English man went into this room and heard somebody in the clo closet saying, "I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna eat you." But um, I'm a traveller comedian, and um, being a travel comedian is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. But um, I'll never do it again. But uh... <laughs> so then and he ran out screaming, "Say, Paddy Scottish man, Paddy Scottish man, look what's in there!" And then he went in and heard somebody saying, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna eat you. What key opens every lock? The pie key. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you call a smart traveller? A tinker. <laughs> uh, what's a traveller's favourite chocolate? Wagon wheels. <laughs> <laughs> then the train walk in and open up the press and they see a little young unflit in the press talking to his snots saying, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna eat you. See, hopefully picking his nose, really. What's a traveller's favourite bar? A tow bar? <laughs> <laughs> the chap is naturally funny and this process will help him explore his funniness, his creativity, his stage presence, his confidence. I think it's going to be phenomenal for him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Fabio D! <laughs> when I came to Ireland, me doing comedy was easier for me because um, even if you look at me and my big eyeballs, you want to laugh sometimes, you know, because people just find me, people just like, oh my God, you look like Eddie Murphy, which I not really don't. And they just like, you know, tell me that I look like different people. And I find it more easier to make them laugh because to me, I see what's funny about the Irish community and I use it to my jokes. In my country, there's this food we call pounded yam. Pounded yam. And pounded yam, it's, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a potato on stereo, you know what I mean? And the way we cook this food is they use, they pound the food, they pound the pounded yam like this, okay? Like, I'm blown away by the fact that you use an American accent on stage normally, but today you've chosen to use your accent. I try to be myself due to um, to the program we're doing, just to show people our humor of comedy, what to make Africans laugh that Irish people won't laugh. So I just, I just did it on purpose, you know. Now a man was was teaching his son how to cook for the yam. Now what I do is, if I put my hand here, you pound it, okay. Wherever I put my hand, you just pound the body yam, okay, son. The son goes, okay, no problem. The father puts his hand there, the son pounded. Um, the father puts his hand there, the son pounded. So the father wanted to taste the food and the song pounds, mouth. Just, I have this belief in my head, like, use American accent and they will laugh, okay? Use African accent, they will look at you like a weirdo. So that's my mind speaking to me, not me right now. So it's my mind saying, use American accent and the Irish will laugh, and it's very funny, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Sasha Bikini! You know, humor, you know, if you go from one culture to another, what works, what doesn't work? Um, and I, I know they were looking at elements for the differences. I want to know what the commonalities are between them because, you know, doing an international circuit one day is always the dream. So if you know what the commonalities are, you can go from one place to another and you have your little formula of what will work, then, you know, hopefully that's going to help you as a comedian. It's going to help with success. There's an Englishman, a Scotsman and an Irishman in a pub and the, uh, they're all drinking pints of Guinness and there's three flies and each of those flies drops into the, each of those pints of Guinness and the Englishman goes, good grief, I'm not drinking that and puts the pint away and the Scotland's go, I have no bother and he drinks it and the Irishman picks up the, 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 uh, the fly and goes, spit it out, spit it out! <laughs> <laughs> that is weird.
that was weird getting up there, you know, um, just seeing five people in a line in the audience without a drink in their hand, just looking at you. I felt as if in an interview or on a parole hearing or something, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Dale! Thanks, Philip. Good evening, folks. My name is Dale Vikram Singer. I'm here to tick all your equal opportunities boxes, right? I'm a woman, I'm a foreigner, and I'm a lesbian, right? That's right. I'm here to steal all your jobs, eat all your food, and fuck all your women. Hey. Now, I, I'm really excited because that's not really true. I don't really want to fuck all Irish women. I just want to have one. I'm actually engaged to this wonderful Irish woman, and we have what we call civil partnership. But it sounds really strange because you're, you're saying we're engaged to become civil partners. Here, I'd like you to meet my civil partner. She's civil to me most of the time until we have to argue about whose turn it is to put out the wheelie bin or whose turn it is to wear the strap on tonight. You know, those normal, <laughs> don't know those the kind of jokes that you everyone jokes about, you know? The funny part I found about you was the lesbian part because I'm, I don't know, it's, I don't know if it's me or it's, it's everybody. I just don't think women will make me laugh. Like, we guys have a lot of things to talk about. We have, like, a lot of things going on in life. Women just have relationship and sex, that's all, so... Really? Really? Yeah. 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 But that, can you use me? Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what I think it is. Like, relationship and like, sex? Like, there's nothing much you guys can talk about apart from... Like, okay, there's nothing... A woman can come out and say, oh, my boyfriend broke up with me because of I did that, it would be funny. Or she can say, oh, I don't give my boyfriend sex all the time, that would be funny. But what else can you say that's going to make a nigga like that laugh birth, about you? Okay? You know what we I mean? So it's different. We have over. I, I do worry about Fabudi though, I do, because there's certain things he say, comes out with um, that, that for me, th I, I, I think I would, would what you're saying actually um, deepen the, um, the stereotype that is out there about an African man. When Fabudi gets up, I think he's got a great um, opportunity to kind of change that, you know, and to challenge that. Uh, and um, so my fear is, would he actually end up doing the opposite? There were some interesting moments and some um, kind of moments where there was a bit of tension in the room and some people were dropping, uh, dropping bombs, like Fabu's comment about women. But it was great then, as soon as Fabu dropped his line in, that the we're in an informal situation kind of fell away and he just started talking and as you would in a coffee shop or in a bar and there was a real discussion happening and I, I thought that was very interesting. So here's the thing, <laughs> we're having these discussions in a comedy context which I think is fascinating, yeah? We're gonna find humour in all this shit that other people aren't doing, yeah? So we're gonna have an edge, we're gonna be unique, we're gonna be different, we're gonna be fresh, young, hip, we're gonna be hitting all these buttons. And I think when we get an audience in front of that, when we're in front of an audience, we are gonna blow their socks off, we're gonna blow their brains off, they're gonna laugh their asses off, and we're gonna want more. I'm hoping to, to have a better understanding of humor and the, the, the common nature of humor through different cultures. It's so cool to see all their own humors and how they feel it is to make people laugh. Um, I feel a bit nervous about going on stage the first time to do stand-up. I'm comfortable doing the singing because I've done that a lot. Whereas the comedy, this would be the very first time I've actually, you know, stood up and told jokes continuously. A, l a lot of the stuff I really haven't heard ever before. I've never heard an outspoken lesbian before, which is Dill. And the fact that everybody kind of calls her Dill Dawn, just nobody minds. I think the workshop is important because we're just beginning to explore for ourselves how far can we go and how do you know when you've gone too far. So figure out where the boundaries are and then play with it, but never lose sight of it. So yeah, I think we've definitely started the process of them on the road to becoming stand-up comedians. The focus now is towards the gig at the end, us putting on a gig in DCTV's um, place in Temple Bar. It's gonna be great, Craig. In the next episode of Journey of a Joke, our five stand-ups will take a workshop in timing and stage presence with comedian Aidan Killian. Hello, how's it going? We'll get to know Thomas and Dill a little better as they think about what to write for their new routines. And Fabu does it again. Ah, but today, tomorrow I'm straight, no, no, I'm gay. <laughs>